So one thing that Trump supporters love to talk about is how smart Donald Trump is. He knows the system, he knows the courts, he knows the government. Donald Trump knows everything. He's a doctor, he's a scientist, he's a lawyer, he's all of the above. He checks all the boxes for MAGA. But yet we watch him make them jump through those mental hoops every day. And we ask ourselves, how can they do it and how can they not catch him in his bullshit? For example, he came out and said that he would love to testify, that he wanted to testify. Then he said that he couldn't testify because he had a gag order. Anybody that's ever watched an episode of Perry Mason or Matlock knows that's not true, but even his lawyer nodded along in agreement with him. Take a look at this clip. Well, I'm not allowed to testify. I'm under a gag order. I can't testify. Well, that's not now, we're going to be appealing the gag order. I, I'd love to answer that question. It's a very easy question, the easiest question so far. But uh, I'm not allowed to testify because this judge, who's totally conflicted, has me under an unconstitutional gag order. Nobody's ever had that before. And we don't like it, and it's not fair. Other people are allowed to do whatever they want to us, and I'm not allowed as a presidential candidate, the leading candidate, the Republican Party nominee, and the one who's leading Biden by a lot, I'm not allowed to talk. Uh, there's never been any abuse like this before. This conflicted judge ought to get out of this case. He shouldn't be, he should not be having this case. He gives us nothing. It's such a rigged court. So I'm not allowed to testify uh, because of an unconstitutional gag order. We're appealing the gag order. So again, if you know anything at all about the system, you know that that's not how a gag order works. He can still testify. And if he was so smart, wouldn't he know that? If Donald Trump is the smart guy that knows everything about everything, then why wouldn't he know that? Actually, the next day he came out and said, no, the gag order doesn't stop me from testifying. I can still testify. Take a look at this. The gag order stops me from talking about people and responding when they say things about me. We have people saying things about me and I'm not allowed to respond. So this judge has taken away my constitutional right. And as a the Republican candidate and somebody that's leading Biden by a lot, I should be able to respond. But this guy's got me with the gag order. Now we're, we're filing, I think today, a constitutional motion to get this out. We'll be filing a lawsuit on the constitutionality of it. But if somebody says something about me and I'm not allowed to respond, that's never happened before. Thank you. Thank you. So now he says that he can testify. But again, for those that think Donald Trump is so smart and such a genius, why didn't he know that to start with? You know why? Because really, he does not want to testify. Donald Trump does not want to get on that stand. He's trying to make every excuse as to why he can't get on the stand. Of course he's going to talk big and bold. Of course he's going to say that he knows it all and he's going to shut down the fake news media and he's going to bring in his articles and say, hey, look, I brought all these articles that talks really highly of me. For those of you that forgot this, I got to show you one more time. Uh, can't even allow articles to be put in. As an example, these are articles that were over the last day and a half. They're very good articles. They say the case is a sham and it shouldn't even be tried. It shouldn't have been submitted. And I don't even know if you're allowed to put them in. We have a gag order, which to me is totally unconstitutional. I'm not allowed to talk, but people are allowed to talk about me. So they can talk about me. They can say whatever they want. They can lie. But I'm not allowed to say anything. I just have to sit back and uh, look at why a conflicted judge has ordered me to have a gag order. I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like that. You know, if I truly was a Trump supporter, that would be a moment where I would say to myself, wait a minute, he doesn't know how this works? Anyone knows how that works. And why did that lawyer stand there and nod in agreement with him when he said, yeah, I've got a gag order, I can't testify? Any lawyer worth his salt would have stepped forward and said, no, no, sir, you absolutely can testify. But that tells you that that lawyer is just there to be a yes man for Donald Trump and say whatever he says. I can't imagine being his lawyer and having to sit there and watch him just make a complete and total fool of himself and you've got to roll with it and you've got to be humiliated right alongside him. 
Donald Trump doesn't want to testify. He doesn't want to get on that stand because he knows when he does, he won't be able to shut up. And his lawyers knows that he won't be able to shut up. And again, if he was a smart guy, he would know when to talk and when not to. In the words of Kenny Rogers, he'd know when to hold them and know when to fold them. But he doesn't know when to do either of those things. And everybody talks about how he's a stable genius. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'll tell you something else. Donald Trump does not want to debate Joe Biden. We've been predicting that here at the Midas Touch Network for a long time, that when it comes right down to it, he won't debate Joe Biden. Of course he's saying he wants to now. Right now he's out there and he's going, oh, I'll debate him right here and right now. He's saying that because he knows that's not how it works. The debates don't happen yet. Later in the year when they do happen, he will say, oh, well, I'm not going to debate him now. If he wouldn't debate me when I ask him to and he won't do it on my terms and conditions, then I'm not going to debate him. Why? Because he doesn't want to stand up there and face the music. He does not want to be on a stage with Joe Biden. He does not want to have to talk about January 6th. He doesn't want to have to talk about Roe versus Wade and the rights he stripped away from women. He doesn't want to have to talk about sharing the nuclear codes. He doesn't want to have to sit and talk about all of the things that he's done, the Stormy Daniels trial. Everything is going to come out on him even more so. Right now, he's getting to walk out after court and stand there and talk about it being a rigged trial and talk about how the cards are stacked against him and his supporters are listening to that. But when he's on the stage with Joe Biden and the tough question starts coming at him and he has to be held accountable for all the things that he's said and done, I predict right then and there is when he's going to say, no, I want no part of it. He's been out there completely making a mockery out of our court system. Now, the right will tell you that he's causing people to, that, that the treatment of Donald Trump, how they'll say it, it's the treatment of Donald Trump that is causing people to lose faith in the justice system. Take a look at this clip from J.D. Vance. I think the biggest threat to American democracy, Caitlin, is that the Biden administration is trying to prevent Donald Trump from campaigning and taking his case to the American people, a, even as they, they hide their own York candidate. That's presiding over that case. It's, the Biden administration is not preventing Donald Trump from campaigning. He just did two the, campaign this, events tonight. This is a this is a really important point, Caitlin. Who is the number three person from the Biden Department of Justice who went to work for the New York prosecutor just months before he brought this case against Donald Trump? You can't have people moving from the Biden administration to prosecute Donald Trump in New York and say it has nothing to do with the Biden administration, especially Attorneys when the judge is the, the Biden Justice administration Department donor. Attorneys go from the local DA's offices all, all the time. That's not that unusual. I mean, uh, you're an attorney, you know it's, that. It's, it's pretty you probably unusual. Have colleagues who went to Yale with you that did that. It's pretty unusual for the number three person in the Department of Justice to then go to the New York prosecutor's office to bring a bogus case against Donald Trump and then to have the judge presiding over that case to be a donor to Biden Harris. I think that's pretty unusual, Caitlin, and really is, aside from your views or anyone else's views about Donald Trump, this is a real threat to Americans' trust in the legal system. If you look at polling, even a lot of folks who are going to vote for Joe Biden think that the lawfare against Donald Trump is bogus. We're destroying faith in the American system of law and order to okay. try to bring down Joe Biden's political opponent. That's a threat to democracy. It's a jury of his peers that indicted him and a jury of his peers that will be, that are in that room right now and will decide this case. Senator J.D. Vance. No, it's not the treatment of Donald Trump that is causing people to lose faith in the justice system the way they portray it. What's causing a lot of us to lose faith is seeing him continue to get away with shit that we know good and well we wouldn't get away with in a courtroom. We know good and well we wouldn't get away with if we was the one defending ourselves on trial. And to anyone out there who supports Donald Trump, really ask yourself, could you get away with his act in court? Could you get away with saying the things that he's done after court, after being told not to? How many times have you been in court and you got set down and you got shut up? It's it, When he sits there and goes, this has never been seen before, that's bullshit. Watch an episode of Matlock. I know I always say that, but I'm just trying to break it down on the simplest of level, folks. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that in court, a judge can say, overruled. <laughs> in court, a judge can say, you're out of line. A judge can say, one more outburst out of you and you're out of here. I mean... Anyone knows that, but Donald Trump and apparently his followers who still believes that everything is rigged against him and everyone is treating him so badly. But no, did you ever stop to try to wrap your mind around the fact that maybe, just maybe, it's because Donald Trump is a con artist. Maybe it's because he's been conning the system 
And he's causing people to lose, lose faith in the system. He's causing people to lose faith in democracy. That's what's happening. Because we're seeing a guy just continue to get pampered, and he does not deserve that. He, he, I mean, I, I want to see the book thrown at him. I, I do. Because I, I don't think when people says, oh, well, we need to heal. Yeah, we do. But we can't heal until we hold somebody accountable. Because how are we going to move forward? How are we going to move forward? And what would be the point in ever having an inauguration again? What would be the point in ever having a president lay their left hand on a Bible, raise their right hand, and swear to protect and defend the Constitution when this guy has said he would terminate it whenever he wanted to? When, after all he's done, what would be the point? So I feel like, yeah, if we want to heal, we hold Donald Trump accountable. And the right wing goes back to the drawing board, and they try to find someone with a little basic human decency that can represent their ridiculous, well, I started to say ideas, but they don't have any.